President Donald Trump's campaign says he will not speak outdoors in Tulsa, Oklahoma, after massive crowds he had hoped for failed to materialize. As AP's Ben Thomas reports, the president's decision came after six of his campaign staff came down with the coronavirus. The Trump campaign says the staff members were helping set up the event, and as soon as the results were known, quarantine procedures were put in place. None of the staff members will attend the event, and neither will anyone who had any contact with them. Campaign officials say everyone attending the rally will be given temperature checks before they pass through security. They'll also be given masks to wear if they choose, and hand sanitizer. The rally is expected to be the biggest indoor event the country has seen since restrictions to prevent the coronavirus from spreading began in March. Tulsa has seen COVID-19 cases spike in the past week. Ben Thomas, Washington. A U.S. judge on Saturday denied a request by the Trump administration for an injunction to block publication of a book by former National Security Advisor John Bolton. We get more in this report produced by Reuters' Jonah Green. The administration has sought a temporary restraining order and preliminary injunction against the publication of The Room Where It Happened, a White House memoir, saying it contained classified information and threatened national security. In his ruling, U.S. District Judge Royce Lamberth said that, quote, while Bolton's unilateral conduct raises grave national security concerns, the government has not established that an injunction is an appropriate remedy. Adding, quote, defendant Bolton has gambled with the national security of the United States. But the judge also said it was too late. Quote, with hundreds of thousands of copies around the globe, many in newsrooms, the damage is done. That report from Reuters, Jonah Green. For more on these stories, visit our website. This is VOA News. China unveiled the details Saturday of a planned national security law for Hong Kong that will allow the Communist Party to markedly expand its power and tighten its control of the Asian financial hub. China's National People's Congress Standing Committee wound up its meeting Saturday without the legislation being formally approved, though the details released by the Xinhua official news agency prompted widespread unease among legal experts and analysts. According to an explanation of the law released by Xinhua, a new National Security Commission headed by its Beijing-appointed top leader but supervised by the Chinese government will be established in Hong Kong. Chinese security agents, which Beijing says are required to follow Hong Kong's laws, also will be stationed in the city to deal directly with some cases there. China has repeatedly prompted Hong Kong leaders to enact legislation to plug a loophole of national security in the wake of year-long protests in Hong Kong sparked by a controversial extradition bill. Pope Francis on Saturday held his first audience for a group of people since Italy lifted its coronavirus lockdown. As Olivia Chan reports, the pontiff granted the audience to health workers from the Italian region most affected by the pandemic. Doctors and nurses gathered in Vatican's Clementine Hall, wearing masks and respecting social distancing rules. The pontiff praised them for being angels and thanked them for their self-sacrifice and professionalism. He singled out how doctors and nurses had loaned their cell phones to dying patients so they could say their final goodbyes to their loved ones, calling it, quote, a gesture of creativity and love. Italy returned to relative normality on June the 3rd when Italians were allowed to move between regions again. But rules such as social distancing in public and wearing masks are still in effect. That's Reuters' Olivia Chan. A new report by the U.N. Refugee Agency says nearly 80 million people, half of them children, were displaced from their homes by the end of 2019. Reuters' Edward Barron reports it was released to coincide with World Refugee Day. The numbers displaced are nearly twice as many as a decade ago, according to a new report from the United Nations Refugee Agency, UNHCR, released to coincide with World Refugee Day. Hotspots in Africa include the Democratic Republic of Congo, Burkina Faso and the wider Sahel region. The UN's refugee agency and the government of Kenya have ramped up their health response in the Dadaab refugee camp located in eastern Kenya, close to Somalia. It's currently home to more than 217,000 refugees and poor sanitation and overcrowding.